we are seeing waves of sophisticated phone, text, online scam attempts, and that's leaving Americans numb to the dangers of some of these financial scams and overconfident in their ability to prevent them. A new city survey performed by YouGov shows that while 90% of U.S. adults show that they're able to, they do believe they're able to fend off financial scams, more than 27% report having fallen victim to them at some point, increasing their chances of financial consequences. So with me is Mike Steinbach, the head of financial crimes and fraud prevention at City and former FBI agent to help us uh, do this because boy, they feel like they are everywhere. Uh, they're just constantly hitting us up here. What would you say, like what percentage of people um, are victim of this and why are so many of us scammed? Yeah, thanks for having me, Jane. So you, you highlighted some interesting statistics that we pulled out of our survey that said 90% of Americans feel they can fend off uh, an attack. But what our data shows is that's just not the case. There is um, an overconfidence in the American public, right? We are too busy, we're too distracted in life, and we're too smart. It won't happen to me. So says every victim that I've ever dealt with. And in reality, frauds don't discriminate. They target all demographics. They go after young, old, wealthy, those living paycheck to paycheck, those with PhDs and those with GEDs. And so although there's this belief among Americans that they can fend themselves off from scams and fraud, in reality, over a quarter of those have been victimized by fraud. And so fraud is very pervasive and they attack all parts of our, our society. And you're absolutely right. I mean, you can fend off 99 and all it takes is one of them to sneak through when you're tired or just, you know, in, in a hurry or something like that. So why are the holidays an especially vulnerable time for these types of scams? Yeah, you just described it, right? We At the holidays, um, the typical American is uh, busy uh, running around, finishing up with work, uh, distracted by um, the prepare preparations for the holidays, buying gifts. And so we're not being as careful as we would normally be. And fraudsters take advantage of that, all of the holiday shopping, the increased spending online, uh, increased package deliveries. These are all areas where fraudsters like to exploit. And so the holidays are a unique time. But I must say that uh, fraud will focus their attention based on the season, and they will change their tactics based on the season. Their their holiday themed attacks occur now, but then come January, February, they'll focus on romance scams in 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 preparation for Valentine's Day. They'll focus on attacks throughout the year based on the season and the situation going on in the world. What are some of the common strategies that these scammers use? Some of these tactics. Yeah, some of the things we see them using, uh, bank impersonation scams, where they'll contact you purporting to be your bank, advising you that uh, they've identified fraud on your account, asking you to move money, uh, transfer money. And let me be clear, no bank will ever ask you to transfer your money. That's a scam. That's fraud. Another very important uh, prevalent attack that we see during the holidays is package delivery scams. You get a phone call, a text, or an email saying that you have a missing delivery, that you have a delayed delivery, asking you, asking you to click on a link and input information. That's a scam. If you have concerns about a legitimate package delivery, contact the shipper or the company from which you purchased that merchandise. Hmm. I've gotten all of the above, actually. And that, that package delivery one has been very common this year. What can people look for? Are, are there telltale signs that something is a scam? Yeah, that's a great question. And so what I tell folks is that as opposed to me just giving you a checklist of one, two, three to prevent scam or fraud X, because if I do that, then if the fraudster shift and it comes across as fraud Y, you're going to say, wait a second, Mike told me about X, didn't tell me about Y. So what I say is, look, you need to start with the right mentality, the right mindset, educate yourself on the types of scams that you're seeing out there. And then um, develop a mentality about being suspicious about unsolicited incoming communications. At City, we say, don't take the call, make the call. But more broadly, what that means is any communication, whether it's a knock on the door, uh, a letter in the mail, an email, a text, a phone call, be suspicious if you didn't um, ask for that, if it's coming to you unsolicited. Um, also, protect your personal information. Be aware of where you're at, your surroundings, where are you logging in. Trust your instincts, right? That's how you develop the right mindset. And then you have to partner with the bank. 
enabling biometric login, adding two-factor authentication, creating unique long passwords, setting up account alerts to identify when transactions are occurring. And then lastly, spend a couple minutes each day checking through your mobile app, your transaction history to make sure you recognize everything that's occurring. Those are how you develop a strong defense against the frauds and the scams that we're seeing today. All great advice. Where can somebody go for more information? Yeah, there's lots of information out there. At City, we created a dedicated page, city.com slash fraud prevention, where we provide the same tips I just talked about in more detail and more, and also some of the scams that we're seeing uh, occurring out there today. Hey, thank you so much, Mike. It's so important that we keep on top of this. So thank you so much for your advice today.